losing my hair enabled me to really find out who I was behind all the ideas of, of who I thought I needed to present to the world. What started me on this journey was initially losing all my hair to alopecia when I turned 40 and um, not only becoming bald, but actually then also putting on a lot of weight from the steroids that were used to try to treat the alopecia. And it meant that my body confidence reached a really low point until I learned how to feel confident in my own skin, despite not looking the way that uh, women always think we're supposed to look. And that inspired me to want to help other people, not only with body confidence, but all kinds of areas of confidence that hold them back. When I first lost my hair to alopecia, my confidence hit an all-time low and I never imagined that I would be comfortable being seen in public without a wig on, let alone in a wider arena, sharing advice on how to become confident. What actually happened though was losing my hair enabled me to really find out who I was behind all the ideas of the who I thought I needed to present to the world. And so actually losing my hair was the most positive thing to ever happen to me because it allowed me to find my own confidence and to be able to help people in a way I never could have imagined doing before losing my hair. At the beginning, I thought it was the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. And now I know actually it was the best. We brought up with a very narrow idea of what perfect is meant to look like and be like and when my hair first fell out I thought that that made me about as far from perfect as I was ever going to get. I thought that I needed to be spending my life trying to be thin, trying to have long swishy flowing hair and actually I feel more positive in my own skin, more beautiful, short, fat and bald than I ever could have done with all the years that I spent trying to be the opposite of what I look like now. For anyone who is at a point where their confidence is low, the best advice I can give is to give yourself permission to stop trying to be the thing that you think everybody else wants you to be, whether that's to do with the way you look or the job that you do or the friends that you have or the places you go to socialise. We're all so busy trying to fit into this idea of what we think is expected of us that actually that just holds us back. When we give ourselves permission to just stop, to stop trying to change and allow ourselves to just be who we are, that's when the confidence journey really begins. I learned that confidence isn't a quality that we've either got or we haven't. I learned that it's something that we can, can learn and improve and, and build on. And that actually there are things all of us can do to become more confident in the areas that we want to be more confident in. When we think of somebody who is confident, we might imagine that that means uh, living outside their comfort zone. But actually, what I've learned is that we are at our most confident when we're in our comfort zones. So the most important thing that any of us can do to become more confident is to think about expanding our comfort zone, thinking about the things that we would do if we were more confident, but currently are outside our comfort zone, and asking ourselves, what would need to change for that, my comfort zone to grow to include that thing. And that's the kind of work that I do to help people to become more confident is thinking about how do we grow your comfort zone more.